Many years ago, some people left France and came to the New World to avoid persecution and be happy. They settled in Acadie, part of Nova Scotia. Then the Acadians were forced to leave their home. They headed south to Louisiana, where they had some friends along the bayous and river. Acadians became Cajuns. The Cajun customs, fun, and food still prevail in South Louisiana. I'm proud to be half lead Louisiana French or Cajun. I'm Justin Wilson. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me today. I guarantee. And I've got some wonderful stuff to cook for you. Something I like to eat myself. Like, uh, I got, uh, how you call it, macaroni or spaghetti and with cheese. We cook that with the, oh, I'll show you. I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm going to show you just how this is did. But before I did that, I want to tell you a story. I think about this story because I eat so much of this sometimes that this happens with me. I got a friend that's got a, a drugstore in uh, Albany, Louisiana, named um, Garvan Hill. Great big man, about six foot eight since he lost all that weight down to 290. <laughs> and he was in his drugstore one day in, uh, down behind the counter, and a little Cajun coming there from down around where I live in French settlement, and he'd never been in his drugstore before, and he, he walked to Garvin behind the counter and said, uh, are you the druggist, huh? Garvin said, I'm the pharmacist. He went to old Miss, you know, trying to act smart. <laughs> He said, well, I would like to see the drugs. He said, well, I'm the drugs. He said, you bought them? He said, yeah. <laughs> he said, mister, you got something for the hiccups, huh? Garvin reached across that counter and blah! Hit him on the nose and knocked him down, blooded his nose. The little kid laying on the floor there looked at him and said, what the hell you do that for, mister? He said, you ain't got the hiccups no more. <laughs> he said, I never did have them. My wife's got them out there in the car. <laughs> Right now, I'm gonna cook macaroni and cheese. That's the first thing I'm gonna cook. I got most everything ready here, I hope. Yeah, look like it. And what we're gonna do is let you know what we did before. While y'all were sleeping, I was working. I cooked some hellball macaroni. I cooked that till it's tender. Not particularly plum done, but most, most nearly plum done. I got there and got all this stuff chopped up, busy as a one on paper hanging a contest with the H, I guarantee. <laughs> but right now I'm going to put a little, I'm a greasy casserole before I did something else and put that with olive oil. Just a little, not much, just enough to grease them. And people say, uh, how come you don't use some other grease? Well, I like olive oil better, that's how I come. Tastes more better. And it's easy to work with more better. And it don't get ransom on your hand quite as bad as the other, too. So what you did is just spread that good grease to side, too, so you don't, uh, won't be too hard to clean this thing up once we get, get this stuff cooked and ready to do something else. Then I take a, a dish towel and wipe them olive oil off my fingers so I won't drop something when I'm picking up out here, you know? That's bad. <laughs> In this bowl, I'm gonna add some things and mix it all together. First, I got um, a cup of chopped onion. Put that on there like that. I got a cup of fresh mushroom. I don't chop up there pretty good there. Slice them up, you know, put them on there. Smoked sausage. Ooh, that smell good. Ooh. I got a cup of that. Put it on there like that, too. Now, I got a whole bunch of cheese. I use three kinds of cheeses when I'm, when I'm cooked this uh, all the time. I got uh, plain old American cheese there, how you call it, cheddar, something. I call it rat cheese, too, you know. And I got some Swiss cheese, right, oh, great up there, good. And I put some Romana cheese. I put that in there. We're going to put that on there, and we're going to mix all this up real good. Don't worry about that. To mix this up, I like to do a little of this this way first so I don't spill anything on the floor. And I use uh, the, the mixes I come into this world with. <laughs> My hand. Mix that up there pretty good like that. Whew, that smells good already. I might just eat some right away. 
And then I take a bead of what I got over here. As soon as I get that mixed a little bit, I want to get it mixed up right. Oh, man. Mm. Wipe my hands some more. And I got some egg here. But first of all, let me let me measure something before I did that so I can uh, be sure. I got to put two cups of wine on this, you know? Ooh, it's right, I guarantee. <laughs> two cups. Oop. That's a little bit more than two cups. But I tell you what, never cook with a wine. That you won't drink, and I got a little bit more than two cups. I'll see if it's any good. <laughs> mm, real good. So what I'm gonna do? First of all, I'm gonna beat these eggs. I got six eggs in here, and you can put more than that. So I like eggs. I'm gonna tell you a story about egg in a little bit. I like egg very much. But with these eggs, I'm gonna add them wine to where these eggs smell like egg knock. Add the wine. And beat the egg. Over the stuff just in case, you know. In case it's gonna fall in there, it's gonna fall in there. Just like eggnog. <laughs> Smell just like eggnog. Put that on down. beating all got it good every bit of it now what I got to do I got to put a little salt on this you salt this to taste remember this now you your amount of cheese got salt your cheddar cheese got salt your smoked sausage got a little salt so you got to be careful of the salt you put in there so what I'm gonna did I'm just gonna put one teaspoon full in there and that's what that was too one teaspoon now, what I'm going to do is put two tablespoons for the Lien Perrin. Lien Perrin Worcestershire sauce, what I got here. An English name Worcestershire made by a Cajun named Perrin. <laughs> I'm going to put two tablespoons full of that. Measure it just as <laughs> carefully as I know how. Put that on there like that. And I got some hot sauce I got to put. Louisiana hot sauce. Now, I use the cayenne type sauce usually. I use that uh, real sparingly. I put a, just one teaspoon in here. That don't look like much. <laughs> now, we got that. Now, I'm going to mix this some more. I'm going to use a spoon this time because it gets kind of wet on me. Got them wine in there. Ooh, boy. That smells good. Now, what you can do sometimes, if you would like to do that, you can mix all, come back in here, I ain't through, would you? <laughs> Put them back in there. Now, we mix this up as good as we possible can with them spoon. Then we put them on the casserole. Oh, man. I think that if you fix this like this, you're going to like it. You're going to like it very much. It's got enough salt in it, too. I can smell and tell. <laughs> no. We're going to put this on a casserole like this. Be sure you get some saucies in there. You stand, got them. Put this in a greased casserole. It's greased with olive oil. Put that on there. Oh, man. That is good stuff. That all good stuff. Gonna taste more better than it look, too. And it look good. One more spoon. We'll put that there. Now I've got that. I'm gonna use this other casserole because I wanna be sure we got enough. This is for about the oh, four to six Cajuns. <laughs> Fourteen or thirteen other kind of people. Look out there, don't be spilling stuff. That's not nice. 
This is clean. I wiped it off just a while ago. What I got left over, I'll put in something else and cook it. I'll put it in the refrigerator and keep it till tomorrow and cook it the next day, you know, because the season's going to go through it. The season's going to go through that all the time. Oh, man. Put that on there real good. I got a little more I can put in here. Didn't get that quite full enough. Gonna be full when I get through with it, though. Decorated real pretty. Might just as well put it all. Funny thing, I'll measure that hand. Come out right. Of course, after a while, I'll tell you how come I know that. <laughs> put it out of my way. Oh, look what I got to put on that. Some cheese. What do you know about that? What do you know about that? Put to a white one. You got to decorate and make it look pretty. Put this on here like this. That's yellow cheese. White cheese. That's, that's Swiss cheese. Got holes in it. Somebody opened some of this up the other day and said, this cheese no good. It's got holes in it there. Could have took it back. <coughs> Gonna come out just right, I bet. It better. <laughs> Look at that. Don't that pretty. You got to admit that pretty. Put this here right here and make it come out right. Ha! <laughs> it did it. Now I'm gonna put this on the oven. Put this on the oven here. And let it cook for about an hour or to the onion. You, you know it's got onion in there, it got to get done. At about 325 degrees. And I, I would suggest you don't put that on the, the lower, on the upper deal. Put it on the lower cause, so the cheese won't burn on you. Now, let me get this out of my way because I got other things I got to do. I'm going to fix for you right now. Oh, but I got to tell you a story. I got a good friend named Travis Lobel. When he started in the chicken business many years ago, he started off real, real, real slow with a hundred chicken. But he had more trouble with them chicken running out in the road and them automobiles, zoom, 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 run there and kill the damn chicken, you know? <laughs> so we called Captain Walker with the state police. And he said, Captain Walker, you got to did something about these people speeding along here. This is a plant in there going to kill all my chicken. So Captain Walker said, Lieutenant Malone saw our day, and he looked things over, and he put a sign up there, slow, plant entrance, zoom, 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 from old chicken kill. He called him some more, look, you better did something about this. So he sent Malone saw out some more, and he went out there and put a sign up, cheering that play, watch you step, slow yourself down, zoom, zoom, zoom. He called him back, said, look, you didn't did some good at all, I'm going to fix this myself. Captain Walker said, well, go ahead. He's tired of being by. He called him about four times a day, every day for 30 days, you know. Finally, by golly, he didn't hear from him for about two months. And he told Malone, so you better go out there and see what he did. We ain't heard from him. I don't know what kind of business he's taking care of out there with them chicken getting killed. He sent Malone so out there, and there was a great big sign. Slow. Nudist colony. <laughs> So right now, I'm going to fix for you. If I can find my deal, I'm going to put that on. I'm going to fix for you a, a casserole of sweet potato. This is a, a two pound and, and a half a pint, or two quart, two pound, eight ounce can of sweet potato. We're going to put that on there. And kind of mash them up a little bit. And then we're going to pour one cup of honey from the bee. Honey, bee, honey, bee. Ooh, wee, that's good. Honey is good for you, too. I love it. I use it to cook with more than I do any other sweetening, sugar, or anything else. I find that even when I cook or make a pie, I use honey instead of sugar, and it comes out more better. Now, this is moist, 
coconut, good stuff too. There's one cup of moist grated coconut. Gonna put that down there like that. Gonna make that up too, got to make that up. I got a, a cup, one cup. A pecan, I got them pecan chopped real fine. Gonna mix it all up, got to mix that up. Mix it up good. And mash them potato a little bit to keep them from being, so somebody won't be a hog and get a big potato when he ain't supposed to. <laughs> this is crushed pineapple. You can leave the, leave the juice in, depending on how much juice you got on your potato. Or took the juice out and drain it so you won't have too much juice when you're doing this. And what you got to do with this is, I cook it sometime in a, a baking pan or a casserole. And I got some, uh, sometimes I cook this with marshmallows, sometimes I don't. But I'm going to get them after a while, maybe. But I like them better without marshmallows. Sometimes I cook them with them, though. So I'm going to put this right now in this pot. This is a baking pot. You can put this in your oven. It don't hurt nothing. Put that on there. Put that air like that. Whoo, that smells good. I guarantee that smells good. Let me put this down here where it's supposed to be. Out of my way. Hi. Now I'm going to put this in the oven. And let me tell you something. Sometimes I put it and bake it like this, all the way plump. But the best way to do it is bake it like this for a while till it's done. Then take it out and put your marshmallow on and put them in there and let them brown. That's the best way to do that. Put this in this oven, in the upper one there, because that's a more hotter one, at 325 degrees and let that cook. Now I've got to get this out of the way. Now, let me see what I got under here. Oh, look at that. I found a bowl, a great big bowl. We're going to fix a salad today. Actually, what I'm going to fix is the dressing for the salad. And uh, and I hate to waste the dressing, so I got some greens to put on that. <laughs> and I got to rinse my hands because I got honey on them. And you know something? There ain't nothing more sticky than honey. I can't run tea. You get that honey on there, you got to get it off. Well, everything you touch is going to stick with you. <laughs> and I don't want that happening to me right now, no. So put this down out of my way, too. Now, in this bowl, I got the reason that they got twin beds. Garlic. <laughs> Mother's in the set of invention. In the set of the mother invention, garlic necessitated twin bed. There we go. Got them right there. Put them garlic on it. Now, what you put is enough salt on there to where you don't got to worry about salting your, your salad. And you mash them garlic with the salt. And that take care of everything real good. Feel like I'm mashing in the sand, though, I'll tell you that. But you mash it good in that. Mash it good. Put that there like that. Mash them up good. Roll around. Do, 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 do. Boom. Get it done. Now, the next thing you put on that is olive oil. Put you folks with one down. See, that's how come I took them honey off my hand because I couldn't have held anything without, and, and let go of it. Now, eh, about uh, four tablespoonful of olive oil, but that much green, you got to have a lot of olive oil. That one, two, <laughs> three, four, ta four tablespoonful of olive oil. Maybe a little more, maybe a little more. And you stir that around. You always stir everything around. Every time you add something in your salad dressing, you stir it around, you see. Turn around. Now, then, you take some Louisiana hot sauce. 
about a teaspoonful. A teaspoon. That's about a teaspoon. Now, you take some of that good Cajun Worcestershire sauce, Le and Perrin, and put this on here about two teaspoons full. You kind of go around the side. What you got to do is use your common sense if you got some. <laughs> and you stir that around some more. <laughs> And it helps you reduce, too, you know? <laughs> you know. And I know what I'm talking about. I've lost them weight on purpose. Then you haul off that and take some, some lime. I use lime instead of lemon on this. And I squeeze some lime in there. About the two teaspoons full. I've got a squeezer here, but I use my hand. That is about a teaspoon. And you go by taste on this, too. You got to go by taste. And you get your hands clean, too, with this lime juice while you're doing that. That ain't quite enough lime. So I'm going to put some more. Put the lime. And it tastes good, yeah. <laughs> what I'm putting in here, really and truly, ladies and gentlemen, is just about uh, two ta one tablespoon and a half full of lime juice. You go by taste. If you like lime juice, put it in there. If you don't like lime juice, don't put it in there. Put something else. Now, to be sure I got enough tartness on this thing, I add some wine vinegar. Wine vinegar, and you got to be careful about that. You got to haul off that and be sure you get exactly the amount. <laughs> Two teaspoonful of wine vinegar. Two, two. Got them. Got them wine vinegar going real good. And we stir. <laughs> now, up to right now, this is just the, like most people make a, a dressing. But we add a little something to it that make it so much more better. Good Creole mutard, mustard. Two tablespoons full. Or if you like more, you can put that. But this is two tablespoons full. This, this, I measured this. I want you to know. Well, kind of. That's two tablespoons full of mustard. I want to get it all. Every bit of it. Put that back there like that. And get this out of here like it should be. With these born mixers. Now I got to rinse my hands. Now, we stir this some more. Here we go. Look at that. Now, that's pretty, yeah. And into this, we put some greens. After we put two cups of chopped mushroom. Then we add greens. That's crisp lettuce good crisp lettuce and we add some spinach we got chopped up here put some spinach on that put some le uh, escarole or some uh, leaf lettuce what we got here we put that on that whoo boy <laughs> you talk about good now that's gonna be good and we put some of the finest tasting stuff in the world, parsley. We put parsley on it, just chopped, just fairly good. We put that, and then what you do is mix that up. And as you sell out, we don't want to waste them good juices there. Now right now though, I got to go over here and see what I got for me to taste and see if it's some good. And I think I got it. Not that. It is, right here. What do you know, a casserole? Whoo! And I was able to put them, you see, I put them marshmallow on there last because if you don't, they'll brown too quick. You take them out and put them on there. 
Now what I got to do is get me a plate and sit myself down and be sure to sample eat this right now. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Go on there, man. You know you love it. Go ahead on. Now, I'm not going to eat my salad right now because I don't got my salad plate with me, so I'm going to go over here and taste this. You talk about good. Bing. And always pour a little wine. Put a little wine on that. This is red wine. I chose that because the older I get, the more I like red. And it tastes good too. That's another real good reason for choosing them wine. Put that right there. And I got to taste that casserole. You know, this would cook with wine. But you know when you cook with wine, 10 seconds after it comes to a boil, all your alcohol is gone. So don't let that worry you about that. What we got to do right now is taste it. Mmm! 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 Lock the door. Don't let anybody come in here. We're going to eat all this ourselves. I guarantee you. We can't stood for anybody to have any of this. Oh! Mmm! Now, let me try this. Actually, what I, this sweet potato deal I cook here, the sweet potato casserole, I don't serve that as an entree. What I do is I'm going to serve that as a dessert. But when you eat one of my meals, and you eat a dessert, I think you don't quit being a gourmet, which is someone who likes all kind of fine food, and you become a gourmet. <laughs> that is a P-I-G hog, you hear me? <laughs> That's what that is. Now, let me see what that say here. Ooh, you locked the door, I'm going to tell you. Let's don't let a soul in the house. The neighbors can't have any of this. Mm. That's so fine. And with a little taste of wine, nothing more better. Mm. Hey. It's all about good. This program was taped before a studio audience. Many years ago, some people left France and came to the New World to avoid persecution and be happy. They settled in Acadie, part of Nova Scotia. Then the Acadians were forced to leave their home. They headed south to Louisiana, where they had some friends along the bayous and river. Acadians became Cajun. The Cajun customs, fun, and food still prevail in South Louisiana. I'm proud to be half lead Louisiana French or Cajun. I'm Justin Wilson. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And I got more to do here than you can sugar stick on. I got uh, some recipe I'm gonna make that some of you never heard of before. A lot of you never heard of before, but they are good. I'm gonna make red bean gumbo a la Buddy Whitney. A good friend with me would live in Lutcher, Louisiana on the Mississippi River. And it's good, yeah. Now, I had to do a, little, a few little things in advance here because I don't want something to go wrong. I want to show everybody how to make a roux. First, you make a roux. If you make ice cream, you got to make a roux. <laughs> to make a roux, you put some grease, some fat, in a frying pan skillet. Right here, I got about a half a cup of olive oil I'm going to use. I put that on down. Let me move that out of the way there. Then I put just about twice as much Plain flour, no self-rising. You do that, it's too, too bad. Put that on there, and I stir that around 
and put a low, low fire on that. You got to put a low fire and you stir that around like that and look and see how much greases you got, how much flour you got. Sometimes you want to add more flour, sometimes you want to add more greases. But right now, I want to tell you, this is perfect. Half as much grease as flour, and you took your time and you stir it slow. And to make a good rule, what you should do is take about anywhere from 45 minutes to one hour to make that. That's what you got to do. It takes just about that long. I'm going to just leave this right here and get it out of my way. But all I'm trying to do is show you how to did this. Not to, not to make one now because it would took too long. Well, I got one already made. I didn't mess around. I got one already made so I can show you how I did. I'm going to put this out of my way, turn up them fire, get it out of my way, and I'm going to show you what I done did while y'all were sleeping. I got a rule made where I done put on that, just like you saw there, a half a cup of olive oil and a cup of flour. And then I put on that about three cup of onion, chop up real good. Hmm, I love them. Two cup of bell pepper, or sweet pepper, however you want to call that, chop up real good too. And in that, I also put, after I got some juice on that, I put some green onion, let's see, I put about, oh, a cup of green onion chop up, and then about a cup of parsley chop up, and then a teaspoon full of garlic if you need. Now, Sometime in this red bean gumbo, you want to check the on do it that you use because that's a good sausage made in South Louisiana. It may have enough garlic in it, but me, I like garlic, so I put some more on it. And here, I got this right there. That rule is just about right. And this is the part I'm going to put it all in. But you see, them rule, I got onion, bell pepper, green onion, onion, you would call that, and uh, parsley, garlic, all put in there all at one time. And now what I'm going to do is put this in there so that I can uh, uh, put this over here. What, uh, no, I'll be best over here. Put this over here like this and put it in here. Because I'm gonna, I need a bigger pot to make them, uh, make them uh, gumbo. And if I was at my house, I would have did that already. Put it in there and put the fire on it. I don't want to leave any of that good roux. I want to keep all them good roux in there because it is good. Ooh. and turn the fire on it. Now, put this out of my way. Now, in this red bean gumbo, what you got to do is you got to put your, your bean, you cook your bean ahead of time. Then you take them and put them in a blender like this and put a little juice so you won't mess up. And you put this on the top so it won't fly out of the kitchen. <laughs> Not enough juice, you see there? So I'll put some more juice on that. Might just well put it all. And put it and blend some more. Now we make a juice on that. I'm gonna put that with the rest of this. But in this, what I got cooking over here, I got to put three cup, three cup, I say, a white wine. Woo! Let me tell you, I always said this, that's two cup. I always said this, don't never cook with some wine what you can't drink. If you can't drink the wine, don't cook with it because it ain't no good. <laughs> that two cup, they ain't enough, no. Bring that roux. You know, when, when you put the liquid in your roux, don't, don't ever put hot, hot water. Put, uh, if you use uh, water, I don't use water, but I never use the wine, you know. Uh, you put something that's cold, it makes, it makes the flour come away from the onion better. It's just a lot better way to do it. Now, like I say, I need some more wine, so I might just well rinse this out what I got them uh, good old uh, red bean ground up in. But even better yet, I may just haul off there and put that cup of wine in the, in the blender. Now, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just pour in there while I got it in my hand. Put that there. And stir some more. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the on do it. Oh, that smells good. Put that on there. 
And what I got there, I got two pounds of on I put in there, and just to be sure, I got enough meat, I got two pounds of smoked sausage, too. Put that on there. Now I'm going to put the red bean juice on it, just as soon as I stir this up a little bit. Oh, oh. that smells so good, it ought to be against the law. In fact, it is in some places. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Now I'm going to put some... The juice that I've already got ground up, I'll put this in there, what I just showed you about. Ah, that is fine. I don't want to loss any of that, so I'll just go up in here and get some of that and put it out. That is the meat of the red bean. It is so good. Put this down here out of my way. And right here, I got a bunch of this good juice that I've already got ground up. I want to be sure I had enough. So I got this right here, and I'm going to stir it up a little to be sure I get the juice. I'll grind it up ahead of time. We're going to pour some of that on this. Oh, man. Oh, that's so good. Mm-hmm. We got a little fire, slow fire. They cooked that slow fire a long time. I might as well put it all, because I measured it. You see there? Ain't that nice? Whoo, boy, that is fine. Now, what I got to put on there is a couple of the little things, like uh, I got to put some of that uh, sauce that's made in uh, England, but it's got a Cajun name, Lee and Perrin. Put that good sauce in that. And I got my measuring spoon right here. What it say I got to do here is put Worcestershire sauce, as much as I like. I like a lot. <laughs> put that on there like that. Put the lid back on it. You got to put some salt on this too, you know, because even though you got the on doing, but you got to watch this. You smell it to be sure it ain't got too much salt already. And then you put some salt, like uh, two teaspoons. That's a teaspoon. Let's see if that's a teaspoon. Well, what do you know it's a teaspoon? <laughs> you put that on there. You stir that a little bit to be sure you got everything going right. Give you vegetable what you got in your roux, stir up real good. And I want to be sure I got that. I got the green onion in there. And let me tell you something. If it's too thick, if, it's, if, it, if, if it look like it, it may stick or something like just add a little water with that. Just to add about a couple of cups of water and you got it made just right. I don't think that's too thick, though. That's going to be just fine. Because remember this, the onions make some juice in there, and the sausages make, the sausage make some juice in there, and it, it all, it'll come out just about right. And you put that like that, put it on a low fire. You don't want it to be too fast. Put it on a low fire, like a, about a, a simmer. Put the lid on that. Let me, forget. Let me see if I got everything I got. I got them red bean. I got them on dew. I got them smoked sausage. I got them onion. I got them sweet pepper. I got them dry white wine. Wooty Charlie and Perrin. I got that. I got salt. I got them red bean. I got them green onion. I got them parsley. Everything. That's gone right there. Now, whoo, I get, oh man, that's going to be good. Yeah, when we get a chance to eat that. Put that out of the way. Now, right now, I got to make something else. When I can find a place to put this, which I'm going to do. Let that out of the way. Wipe up my car. I don't like to have a dirty kitchen, no. Now, what I would like to do is told you a story. I got a friend that went to New Road, Louisiana, a long time ago. Oh, I guess it's been... 30 or 20 years ago, he was over there, and he was walking down the main street of New Road on False River. And he had a daily New Orleans Times picking on paper rolled up under his left arm. And he was looking for that smart Cajun when every town got one of them. If it's a Cajun town, if it ain't a Cajun town, it'll be a smart something else. <laughs> and he finally found and said, Man, I'm glad for you to see me. Uh, Gown on the said, I'm glad for you to see me too. What you want to know? He said, How you know I want to know something? He said, you would not look at me unless you want to know something. Go ahead and ask me. I'm bound to know. He said, all right. I would like for you to tell me where female women's yet is located. He said, what you said? 
He said, I asked you a silver question and I want a silver answer. Can you tell me where a female women's yet, or Y-E-T, is located? He said, female women don't got some yet. He said, look, just because you don't know where it's located, that don't mean she don't got one. <laughs> I guarantee she got one. And the big guy thought, oh, no, she ain't. Oh, yes, hell yeah, hell no, I'll be damn, I'll be damn right. Oh, no, yeah. The smart kid, look, we ain't gonna get some place like this. You so smart, come and ask me them questions. How do you know a female woman got a yet? He said, I didn't thought you'd ever ask me. Roll out that New Orleans Times picking in paper, <laughs> over on the front page, he said, rub your eyeball right down. Both of them at the same time. Cash you eye, it say right down. On the front page, the Daily New Orleans Times picking you in paper. That a female woman been shot with a 38 special and the bullet is in her yet. <laughs> That smart kid and say, I don't know exactly where female women yet is located, but uh, I would, would, would bet money it is right close to her now. <laughs> My friend say, you know women ain't got no now. You just said that the mother the water because you don't know where her yet is located. Say, oh, I guarantee she got her now. And a big August thought, oh no, oh yes, oh no, oh yeah, oh hell yeah, hell no, I'll be damn, I'll be damn right, oh no, yes, no. My friend said, look, we ain't getting some place like that. What makes you think? I say, what makes you think? A female woman got a, a now. That smart kid said, broke my heart to tell you this. You mean it, over? You never hear that song? I wonder who's kissing her now. <laughs> and right now, I got to make myself something here for you to like to eat, like a, a jambalaya. Ooh, look. An oyster jambalaya. You see, I got everything right here. I'm gonna go get the oyster out of the ice box. I'll leave them on purpose in there because I don't want them to spoil no. Whew. But right now, I got here what I got to do first. First, I put two tablespoonful of oil of some kind. I'm using olive oil. Put that on there. Turn the fire on it so I have some hot. Then, I put the just about a cup of onion. I think that's an awful lot. But that's what I got right here. One cup of onion, chop up. Then put the onion, Creole onion. We put that in a cup of bell pepper, sweet pepper, we put that. Then we start that to cook around, get that going. We cook that, we saute that. How you call saute? <laughs> like sort of saute, that's what it is. Sort of saute that around. And then I put some parsley on that, about a cup of parsley. Chopped fresh parsley. Then I stir that around some more. And while that's sauteing, I'm gonna walk myself over there and get them oysters and the juice, what I got in the ice box. Don't want themselves to spoil. Hold yourself still, be right back. Here the oyster. Here the juice. And that automatic door is going to beat me to death if I don't look off. <laughs> Put that there. That's my juice. Believe it or not, that's my wine. <laughs> Got to have that. Then, what I'm going to do, saute this a little bit more, turn the fire up so I got a little more hot. Saute that because where them onions start to look clear and them bell pepper look like I can see through them too. Then we gonna haul off and put some mushrooms in there. Woo, fresh mushrooms sliced. Put that on that. Because I got a little juice in there now. You don't want to put garlic in until you got juice. Put them garlic. I got to get all that because I don't want to waste none of that good flavor and odor. But make people back off when you see them every now and then, you know? Then I'm gonna stir that some more. To get them sauteed together. You got to blend them things the way they work together. Get that done. And with this, there ain't nothing to it. What we got to do right now is put something in this like wine. That's a cup of wine. And then I'm gonna put Oyster juice, that's a, a quart of oyster juice I put on that. Just about a quart. 
Then I'm going to put the rice on that. I put three cup of rice on that. How, come, how much rice I got on that? And we're going to make this like uh, some people make jambalaya, some people don't. Some people make a white jambalaya, they call it. Some people make a red. I make both. Depending on where I am and who I'm making this for and what I'm making it out. Now, we're making this out of oyster, so it would be too white. And what I'm going to do is going to put a can of tomato sauce on it. And incidentally, that's how come I got the wine. And if I didn't put the wine, I'd have to put sugar in it to take the bitter out of the tomato. That's it. See. Put that on there. That's so good, I don't think I'll waste it. I just put a little more wine. Don't hurt a thing to put more wine. That look awful good. Put the wine in there. Put the... And you know, a lot of times people will cheat when they make in jambalaya. <laughs> when they got something they didn't brown the meat enough, like uh, the pork or the chicken or whatever it is, what they will did to make it look dark like it's supposed to, you know, kitchen bouquet. It's black. Put that on there. Just one tablespoon full of kitchen bouquet. It darkened that up pretty good, I'll tell you that for truth. Put them kitchen bouquet on there. And while I'm stirring this around just a least little bit with them rice, I'm going to put one quarter oyster. Just one quart. That's all. Oh. One quarter oyster on that. Oh, oh, oh man. That look good, yeah. Good enough to eat right now, but I ain't going to do it. I'm going to wait. And I got to put a little salt on that. Just a little salt, not too much. Put a little salt on it to, to make it to taste more better. Like, uh, you see, now your kitchen bouquet got a little salt on it. And what we're going to do, we're going to put about three teaspoons full of salt to be sure we got enough. And I'll smell it a little bit to see if it's got enough. Put that over here back here, like that. That thing's slickery on my hands off from messing with these oysters. Put it there like that. And you didn't think you're going to leave out the Louisiana hot sauce. Oh, no. On this, we're going to have to put the pot. Oh, let's see. We're going to put the, about two teaspoons. <laughs> two. Two teaspoons full of hot sauce. We got that going now, and we're going to stir that up. We're going to let this cook a while. This got to cook. You want to cook that jambalaya to where you got most of your water cooked out of it. And then you put the lid on it. When you put the lid on it, you put a pot with water on the lid to tell people, don't put your hand on that. But they ain't supposed to raise the lid from them jambalaya until it's ready. And you don't know if it's ready until you look at it. And when you look at it and it's ready, it's just too damn bad. You done did something wrong. Get this and put it out of my way. I got something else I want to fix for you. Put this out of my way with that. I'm going to make a potato salad with leftover. Anything I hate to do is waste food. And when you're cheering, go to the, to the quick food places there, and you get a bunch of french fries, and you got some leftover, what you going to do with them? Chunk them away? Hell no. <laughs> What you want to do with them is make potato salad out of them. And it works, too. I want to show it to you right now. First, you got this. This is eight cup, eight heaping cup of french fries chopped up. Well, in order to make anything taste good, first you add a cup of onion, or a cup and a half. If you like onion, a cup and a half. I like them, I put two cups. <laughs> You spread that around good with my, my natural mixers. Then I put a cup of celery, a cup of chopped up celery in it. C-E-L-E-R-Y, celery. You put that on there. Then it's it, whatever you like. You put, if, you, if you like this, put it. If you don't like this, don't put it. Then I got some chopped up wrap olive. I like that, so I put it on there. And in order to make this thing work good, you kind of stir stuff around as you go, see. 
Throw it around there, get everything spread all in, not in one place. You don't want to get a whole spoonful of ripe olive when you get a spoonful of this salad. What you want to do is get everything mixed up just exactly right. That's what we're going to do. Now, I got some salad olives chop up with, with pimento on it, and I leave the juice in there because it tastes good. That's why I leave it in there. I like them juice. Take that. Put that like that. While I got them juice, I just put a little hot sauce while nobody looking. <laughs> May put a little more too, there ain't no telling. Put that there like that, mix up some more. Don't be messing around, mix up. Then I got some chopped sweet pickle. Put that, <laughs> put my hand in and make it taste more better. <laughs> Man, wipe my hand off too. That chopped sweet pickle. And now I got, or, or, Sweet pickle relish, whatever you want to use, you can use it. And I got dill relish. Put that on there. Get it all too because it tastes good. Wipe my hands some more. Put that. Now we mix that some more. Mix it up some more. Get her going. See there, ho ho ho. Man, that, it's gonna be good. I'm, I guarantee it's gonna be good. You can put anything else you want in, but I'm not gonna put anything else in. But all I want to do now is put some. Salad dressing. I use salad dressing because it keeps longer than mayonnaise. Put that on there. And you put a lot of that. Because them taters are going to drink it up. Because they've been drunk. They'll grease up and everything else. And they'll drink this up too. You hear? Put that on there. Most. That's a half a jar. Half a quart jar. And I've got some yellow mustard I want to put on there too. There we go. Put that on there. Lick my finger. I'm not gonna put my hand in there anymore. A little more hot sauce. And mix it up. That's what you do, you mix it up. Just like this. Then we're gonna have to put some more of them salad dressing before we make it real good, which we gone did. Oh, now don't that look good? That all good. Oh, that's for true, that's good. I'm trying to stay off of that and not gain some weight. But I generally taste a little of it. But right now, while I let this kind of marinate itself, while I'm going to get myself something to put on the table for me to eat, I'm going to get it this minute. Get something fixed right. There I go. Hold still there. Don't go away. I got it. Right here. Let's see. Jambala. Ooh, boy, come in here, you. Jambala. Got it. Right there. Right here, I got, um, how you call? A tureem. A tureem. Of red bean gumbo. I'm going to put that some right here. Oh, I like that. Took it to my plate and put it down. Then I'm gonna get me some of this jambalaya right this minute because I ain't about to not have some jambalaya. Now I'm gonna put a plate on the side because I got that. Then that come out pretty. Ah, I guarantee that come out pretty. And it tastes good. Well, I can't leave that tater salad without getting just a sliver or two of it, that's all. There I go, on a diet. Eat anything. That's the diet I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't that pretty. <laughs> oh, pour a little wine. Good red wine. It's pretty. And I like it. That's the reason we got it. Put a little more hot sauce on this because it's not quite hot enough for me. me hot enough for y'all, but not for me. There I go. Put a napkin on my lap like I'm supposed to do. Because I'm, you know, nice people. Studies around. Look at that. Ooh, let me taste. Mm. <laughs> Man. Let me taste this other stuff. Here. Ooh, Man, I'll tell you, that's rich. 
Get a oyster? Got one. <laughs> now, that's better than I thought it would be. No use in lying. I didn't get a chance to taste it. Mmm. Let me taste the tail salad. Mmm. That's good. It'll be much more better when it's soaked that little while. You know, just marinate a little while. It'll be much more better. But let me toast all of you. Good food. Oh, man, I guarantee. Just have another little taste, just in case I don't get a chance to taste it again, you know? Mmm. Don't do it. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love it. Now, guarantee. This program was taped before a studio audience.